All right, explorers. Today, we're going to Akershus, which is the most important castle in all of Norway's history. It's one of the first ones and definitely one of the more strate strategically important because it was placed protecting the Oslo Harbor. So we'll go inside and check it out and see what it's all about. Let's go. All right, here it is just around the corner. So we're just walking up to the main entrance right now, but you can already see some of the historical houses, perhaps perhaps a garrison house is just outside the, the main castle walls, uh, or maybe some kind of food storage places. Here we are, almost at the main entrance. It's actually quite, quite humble. But I guess that's what you have in castles, right? So it's not breached easily. Oh, wow. Look at the scale of these stones, man. Try breaking through that. So Ackerhouse was actually built in 1290. So just in the end of the 13th century. And it was built, first of all, to collect the taxes in this region. It was one of the largest regions in Norway. And then, and of course it expanded over the years, became really a strong point of Norway. For hundreds of years, kings and queens of Norway resided in the castle actually, used it as, as their residence. One of the unique features of this castle is that it's actually still being used. As you can see right here, it says Oslo Military Police. So it's an active, it's a castle on active duty. You know, it's a functioning body and this is, makes it even more exciting. And here we go, look at that. We can see the, the heights of the castle. Well, look at that. Here's the the corners of the tower. And what is kind of cool is that you can still see these cannons here. And I'm pretty sure they're standing in more or less the original positions. And if you look just out there, there's a huge liner. And as beautiful as it is, what it really reminds us of is how close would the ships have to come up to Oslo to, let's say, uh, attack the castle and obviously you would have people standing right here behind these cannons and shooting at the ships obviously much much smaller but you get the idea this is literally where it happened and Oslo had hundreds of years of war so these 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 mounts protecting the the cannons and these cannons themselves have seen a lot of action which happened right here on the shore. Wow, look at that. All of this is just covered with cannons. You can imagine the, the roar of the, of the artillery of the ships approached, perhaps, perhaps when the Swedish army tried to conquer Norway, hundreds multiple hundreds of people just perishing in the in the waters right there i am sure this is a resting place of many many soldiers that try to conquer this castle what is fascinating is that throughout its 700 year history akerhus castle has never been captured it survived numerous sieges from the swedish army however it never surrendered the only time it has fallen was in 1940, when the castle surrendered to the forces of Nazi Germany after the capitulation of Norwegian government. In the next five years, it would become a grim place of imprisonment and execution of the resistant army of Norway. So right now we're gonna actually go inside the main 
square of the castle. Here we go. Just walking in into the main gate. Look at this. 1559. So this part of the castle must have been built then. Man, when you're here, you can just you can really see the, the scale of some of these stones. It's just so impressive. I mean, you would be feeling quite safe in here, that's for sure. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Cannons all around. As you can see, we're going on a little incline as we keep, keep on walking. And so as you see, every turn has these, these places for more cannons. So even if the first wall was breached, you'd still have ample amount of time to defend the approaching enemy. Let's see what's here. Oh, I think it's a nice viewing deck. Look at that. Okay. So here you go. Ah, unfortunately, not the best view with all the construction going on. But, you know, this is a sort of fortification that maybe a commander of the garrison would look and ensure that no enemy is coming. It's a nice vintage point for the port right there. Let's keep going. Look at that. The incline is pretty steep. I wonder how the horses would get up here, you know, heavy carriages carrying all the ammunition and, and provisions be a pretty pretty hard steep for them going up here okay well we almost finished our climb I'll show you the look from down here look how steep this is let's let's keep walking and see what we find here Well, look at this, the highest point in the Akarhus castle. Unfortunately, the ship is blocking the, the port, but here it is. We're standing at the wall, looking down there. You can imagine musketeers shooting down the, uh, the incoming hostiles and just throwing stuff down on them from, from the safety the Akerhus castle and and winning all right it appears we're approaching to we're going inside the heart of an anchor house look at this this would be the most protected part of the castle this is where the the royalty and the commanders would sit and oversee their minions defending them look at that wow here we are, right in the center. Wow. To be. Look at that. So we're actually inside the castle right now. This is actual walkways that they would take. As you can see, you can observe outside from these little windows, but... Oh, there's Robert. Say hi, Robert. <laughs> see, there you go. Oh, look at that. Still have some frescoes on the wall. What is that? It's a guy by a tree. Look at that. So you can kind of imagine what the artwork would look like. Okay, let's keep going. Down. Oh! Geez. Dinoided? Mind the gap. Wow, this is this is really steep. This is cool. Look at that. Wow. Look at 
this event matter, all people need to apply. See again, you can see the port from up here. Observe if everything is going fine. Robert, it's here. Robert, it's the dungeon. It's the dungeon. It's slow. Dude, that'd be terrible to be in there. Look at this. Like that. And here we have the dungeon on a slope. Mm. Yeah. Here's a window. As you can see, that would make the windows rather small. But then, what? the entrance mm. of the light quite big. So it would magnify the rays and light up this whole place with a small window like this. You see the parts, some of the parts of the castle are closed down, but you can just imagine the scale of, of this building inside, right? So what do you see on the outside? So it looks like a hill with some, with some tops. But when you go inside, it's a maze of these well-fortified quarters. It's rather low, the ceilings are low, but it's really spacious. It's nice and cool here. However, who is buried in this castle is the remains of these three kings and I believe one queen. So we have Kong Hakon the seventh, Druning Maud, Kong Olaf the fifth, and Crown Princess Martha, all buried right here. Can't access this room, but we can look through the through the gates and see the final resting place of these World War II and post World War II kings of Norway that led their country so great. May they rest in peace. All right, guys. So right now we are in the castle church. So right here we have the organ. It's a rather simple church. I wonder if it was decorated differently back then, but this is kind of what it looks like right now. You have the pulpit, the centerpiece. And what is really interesting, I thought, is this right here. So I'm assuming this is where the king or the queen would sit and observe the mass. It's really interesting. Never seen this before. All right, well, we're climbing ever higher. Let's see what's on this floor. Ooh. Wow, look at that. Okay. Here we have the some of the paintings that depict what it looked like back in the day. Beautiful tapestries of the times of old, the battles. Oh, this is a Roman, look at this. We have Roman insignia right there. So this is Romans perhaps coming to, well, where are they coming to? Interesting. More tapestry here. Hmm, I guess. More paintings. Wow, look at this. You can really feel that you're in, in a very fortified castle when you're here. The, the rocks are so huge. The walls are so thick. How beautiful is that? Some of the armor that the soldiers use, so you can you can just imagine them, them walking through these hallways, clinking their armor. Maybe as they run out to defend it once again. What is this? Might be a market. More tapestries. More armor. Wow. 
You know, for those of you who like ghost stories, I think this would be a, a gold mine. I'm sure there's plenty, plenty of them that are based around this place. Wow, look at this. This is definitely a room that would probably be occupied by some of the nobility. So you can imagine kings and queens just strolling back and forth. Maybe drafting up some plans. Who to conquer next. How to strengthen the kingdom. Wow. Oh, well, this is really neat. Look at this. This gives us a bird eye view for the castle look like in general so i believe we are somewhere right here in this building right now as you can see it would be very hard to attack this place yes i think it is so i think we we entered right here walked all this way up and then walked in the yard right here and went like that, I believe, but I might be wrong. All right. Oh, look at that. These would be the weapons that they would use. Can you imagine what kind of stories they could tell if they could speak? Wow. Look at this, guys. So we are in the king's quarters. So as, as you see, this is a spacious room. From my, what I understand, in the past it was actually partitioned into smaller rooms. So the king would sleep over there, and sometimes the queen would sleep over there. And of course, that had been reconstructed a few times, but but you can just you can feel the, that this is a the place where important decisions were made. You know, decisions that would affect thousands, hundreds of thousands of people, where the wars would be declared, peace treaty is signed. So you can imagine a medieval Norwegian king strolling back and forth on this floor right here, pondering what should he do, perhaps looking outside the window, looking at then Oslo, which was much smaller, but still a major city, and deciding what would he be his next step. All right here, spending sleepless nights right here on this very place. You know, doing, uh, seeing places like this really makes history really real. Oh, and look at this guy. Christian the sixth. You can kind of see the Habsburg jaw right there. Interesting. But look at the look at the drip the guy has. Beautiful. We have here. Let's see. Sophie Magdalene the sixth from the eighteenth century. And right here in the center is what I understand. The king that spent most time here than any other king, Christian the Fourth. Let's get a good picture on this. What a guy! Look at that! Look at that beard and stash. Fantastic. So, Christian the Fourth has apparently opened the mines in Norway, and the reason he did that was he wanted to gather funds for his for his conquests and. As a result, that has benefited Norway quite, quite greatly. Because he he um, he opened mines oh. to get silver and other metals ah. to, to uh, money okay. for the war for So he he's with the advantage in Norway. Well, the other kings, I mean, they stay there for some time, uh, but they usually reside in the north of the world. Mm. They mm. Uh, so his name is King. That's Christian IV. Christian IV. Yeah, that's why it's called the the of Christian IV. Let's keep going. 
Wow, look at this. This is so neat. The original furniture. Wow. Look at that. Fantastic. A fireplace to cool, to keep hot, to keep warm in the cold Norwegian winters. They're not so cold anymore in this part of, this, to, of the country, but they were quite frigid back then. More royal apartments, perhaps. These would be for his second in command or generals. Oh, look at this. This is impressive. Wow. Okay, look at this place. This is definitely made for a very large gathering of people. So I would assume maybe this is where the king would hold his council. Perhaps he would have all of his advisors and commanders sitting here you know, reporting what's happening on the front lines. The king would then make his decision. Or maybe this is a place where they had food. Or maybe both. However, what is clear that this is a place where many people would gather on a very top at the heart of the castle. You can see the ancient portraits of of the monarchs and their and other nobility. Oh, sir. Do you know what what is this place? Is this is this a eating hall or is this where the council will be held? No, oh, dining hall. Dining hall. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Interesting. We are in the dining hall, and this is where the king and his staff and commanders would sit and dine together and share jokes and tell stories and maybe strategize what to do next in the informal informal setting but what is really interesting is that this room has a reputation for being one of the most haunted rooms in all of Oslo and the story is in 16th century a king wanted to rebuild this castle after a great fire so what he did is he invite invited people from the region of Romerik to come here and uh, and rebuild it but they didn't provide them with housing or any sanitation, so they set up downstairs by the by the river. There was a big bog there, and what happened? Um, a plague broke out, and a bunch of them died. A lot of them died, and the story goes that their restless souls still wander the hole that you can see behind me. They go back and forth between the walls. I've talked to some staff here at the museum, and they said that some of, even some of the staff kind of felt uneasy. A lot of people said that they could feel some kind of presence. And when you look at this room, sort of from the corners of your eyes, you can almost see like some, some kind of like a shadow moving back and forth sometimes, especially at night. So if there's anybody who likes ghost stories, definitely make a stop here. You'll love it. All right, guys, and we're about to walk in into the Olaf, the fifth hole. Look at that. Wow. This is what most of the castle would have looked like back in the day. So when you see brick in the previous room, this is what it would actually look like. And of course, here you would have the king sit and delegate his decisions. So this is the very top, the very top of the castle. And this is where the magic happened, right there, right on these chairs. The king would sit with his, himself and his advisors, and people in this hall would listen to every word that he said. This is where the history of Norway happened, right here, in Olaf's fifth hole. Look at this, as we're walking from 
the fortress to the Museum of History, you can hear the bells of Oslo. So as we're walking here, we came on a statue of Tordenskold. Now, Peter Tordenskold was one of the most famous naval commanders of Norway. He was one of the bravest ones to ever fight in the Great Northern War. And unfortunately, his life ended quite shortly at 30 when he died in a duel. But he's revered by the Norwegians for the bravery that he's shown in fighting the Swedish enemy. And here we can actually see the Nobel Peace Center. You know, fun fact, but Gustav Begeland was actually the designer of the Nobel Prize medal. Something that I surely didn't know. So one more reason to thanks the Norwegians 